we are talking the haunting of hill house this is a 10-part netflix drama uh, by showrunner mike flanagan and actually based on a novel by shirley jackson now, this has actually been adapt uh, adapted a couple of times before i think most recently in the uh, 1999 movie the haunting that starred liam neeson but there was a, a version uh, prior to that in the 60s i believe and here we have it in a in a ten part series. Now, uh, as we understand it, the the novel is quite a lot different from this series. A lot has been changed. Some of the characters um, are significantly different from the from the book. So take this as a kind of a very loose adaptation of the uh, of novel by Shirley Jackson. And to give you a kind of a spoiler free uh, kind of uh, synopsis, ultimately, it focuses on a family who basically buy properties, do them up and resell them. This movie has two timelines. It has the past timeline where we have these five siblings, three girls and two boys, and they're two parents, obviously. Uh, and all, all the kids, they're all kids in this kind of timeline, apart from obviously the parents. So these five kids and their, and their parents buy this house to do it up. Then we have our kind of our modern timeline where the kids have grown up and are now adults. Um, and in the, in the, the past timeline, we, we basically see that this kind of very kind of gothic looking house may be home to some kind of malevolent spirits that affects the residents in this house in different ways and ultimately um, manipulates them and kind of like uh, sort of drives them kind of like potentially crazy maybe and affects them maybe in different ways and kind of different haunting ways and this then informs their adult life as each of the members of the family are still kind of being touched by this kind of like these spirits of this house in different ways some more so than others and some kind of like um you know have different kind of like relationships to the kind of the uh uh their the family members and to the house itself and ultimately the, the movie has these kind of two concurrent sort of storylines kind of that's informing you what's the going on both in past and present as the movie goes on and ultimately there's a story of this family having to deal with this kind of like uh this force and obviously each other as a kind of a family unit as well. So it's a very vague synopsis. Uh, I don't want to kind of give too much away. Suffice to say, yes, it is a haunted house movie. Um, let's talk about what works and what doesn't work with uh, the haunting of Hill House. We will go through the positives first of all, and then we'll come on to the negatives. So positives. First of all, this is a very lavish production. Um, there is obviously a lot of money has been spent here. The set design is absolutely fantastic. The, the Hill House itself looks suitably gothic, suitably spooky, and is a genuinely kind of a menacing environment. So the, the cast here all did a fantastic job. There's kind of quite a few familiar faces who you'll kind of see. Um, Carla Gugino, uh, Michael Huseman, who you may know from uh, Dario, Dario from uh, Game of Thrones, among a few others. Um, you'll, you'll kind of recognise a lot of the characters, character actors here from sort of TV and stuff like that, but they all do a great job, and especially the kids as well. The child actors here really do a fantastic job of giving you believable characters. And this is one of the things where I feel the, the, the t TV production benefits over a movie is you get a lot more kind of fleshed out uh, characters in this because obviously you have the time to kind of build up uh, and these characters so you do feel that you, you genuinely know these characters whilst when you watch all these uh, these 10 episodes infinitely more so than if you're just watching a kind of a two hour movie. Um, the actual effects, now it's a, it's a slow burn uh, which we'll come on to again and it's a kind of a, a gradual increase in kind of like the paranormal as the kind of the series progresses so it starts out you know fairly kind of minor but every episode there's something creepy that will happen and i have to say there's that there's a really good sort of good use of um you know effects and kind of using your peripheral vision to keep your eye out for things kind of going around in the background and it's, there's some really effective things here with you know strange figures that may be slightly kind of out of focus or slightly askew and kind of um seem rather disturbing so that was all very good uh the movie uh sorry this the series does have a few kind of like fairly kind of good jump scares here and there and although i did I, it's not kind of full-on horror there is definitely will kind of send a chill up your spine the story is intriguing with kind of lots of kind of twists and turns and obviously uh, i feel the um because of the kind of the characterization you get a good uh, you know uh, emotional resonance from obviously the characters you're kind of watching on screen which is testament to both the actors and obviously the writing 
but it doesn't work for me. This movie, this series will be too slow for, for some people. I actually think this could have done with less episodes, to be honest. I mean, funnily enough, this can be, maybe, can you look at the kind of the, the Netflix Marvel TV shows? Things like Daredevil, even the <laughs> the titles are very similar. But that's always, those series are always confused with maybe being a little bit too long. And I've got to say this, at 10 episodes, you feel like it's dragging its feet a little bit. And I feel it may have been better to have it maybe six episodes. I don't think it needed to be ten. Um, because it does become a little bit too slow for its own good at times. And you will literally see scenes repeated throughout the movie, throughout the series. I keep calling it a movie to apologise. So you will see the same scene repeated two and sometimes three times um, through this series from kind of different perspectives or once you kind of know a bit more about the scene and stuff like that. One of my most frustrating complaints with this series is the way the cliffhangers kind of end up. I mean, this does it about four times, maybe even more than that, where you'll get to an end of an episode and it'll end with a cliffhanger and then the next episode will start and it, you, it won't address what's happened and it'll be someone else's story. And it does it literally four, four or maybe even five times and it's frustrating. It is frustrating. It's, uh, you know, it, it, I, if you recall the second season of Stranger Things, when they had that kind of episode that was, um, you know, in a different city with the... And everyone was pissed off because they wanted to see what happened in the main story. This series does that about four or five times. So it's a little bit frustrating. You know, you'll get to the end of an episode and bam, there'll be some kind of cliffhanger and you want to see what happens next. Next episode starts and... You know, it doesn't address it. You have to wait till the episode after that, something like that. And they've got to say the final couple of episodes do it within the episode. So that was a little frustrating. The other thing I would say is, although I like the acting in this in this series, this is it's not realistic the way people act. Um, it's Hollywood TV land. Act, you know the way people are portrayed because people are aware that there's something weird about this house and they never seem to say oh I've seen like a ghostly apparition they just never have that kind of conversation with someone there is a scene where we have two characters in a car and a ghost literally jumps out behind from the back seat and, and you know obviously brings the car to a, a halt and then they have a conversation about relationships afterwards things like this um, and there's, there's a multiple instances where people will see something and then just don't talk about it with relevant parties. And it's frustrating because that it's just like it makes for, you know, a, a, the plot to progress. But ultimately, you just feel like this is not how people act. People simply don't wouldn't act like that. I mean, if you saw something so blatantly kind of supernatural, you would say something, especially if you know that the people that you are related to have experienced similar things. So that was a little bit of a frustrating uh, trope, I've got to say, that this film overplayed a little bit too much, I feel. So I feel this, this series is a very well-made series. It's definitely a slow burn, it's not going to be for everyone, but the, the acting is, is good, the effects work is very good, the, uh, the atmosphere and the, kind of the, the, the feeling of unease is very kind of like um, present throughout the whole series and the, kind of like the set design location shooting all very good on a, on a kind of a um, production design level it's all fantastic but there are some elements here that annoy me that are, that are just a little bit cliche uh, and a little bit frustrating I feel and just could have been a little bit more concise but overall it's a good series I'll give this series a 7 out of 10 um, have you seen it what did you think of it leave me a comment and I shall look forward to seeing you next time bye for now